Rub up your engines! Rip Hopper says, I'm thinking about getting a 2003 Porsche Boxster. I looked at it and I saw people say, yeah, some are good, some years are bad. And uh, what do you think about a 2003? All right. Porsche Boxsters are endless money pits as they age. That's no exception. The mid-engine ones all are. And that's 18 years old. I had a customer that bought a Porsche Boxster when it was that old. And he got it cheap enough. He only paid six grand for the thing, right? Well, it turned into an endless money pit. And he was only driving a thing like 15, 1,800 miles a year. Uh, they're endless money pits. They're rich men's toys. They have no resale value. Now, if you want a toy like he did and you get it super cheap and you're hardly going to drive it at all, and you want to gamble, go ahead. Just realize. Like I told him when his headlights went out, I did a little research on my data system. I said, you know, if your whole headlight system, the computers, the headlights, and everything went out, it's going to cost you over $6,000 to replace them. That's just the headlight system. So realize they're money pits. Uh, I mean, if you want a little ornament to put in your lawn and it looks beautiful, go ahead, but don't pay much for it. <laughs> Puppy Pepper 10 says, I'm 55, six foot four. I have an SUV, 65 miles, one way to work. Trying to find a smaller size car vehicle, save me money and guess it won't kill my back. Do you know? Yeah, you know, truthfully, I'll tell you something. I got a customer who's six seven and he loves his. He bought a Honda Fit. And they actually have more headroom than a Honda Odyssey van. They got a lot of headroom. They're big and boxy, but they got a lot of room. But it's a Honda Fit. It's got a little bit of four-cylinder engine, and especially if you get a standard transmission, they get phenomenal gas mileage for a vehicle that size. Check out a Honda Fit. They do have a lot of headroom in it. It's just look at it. Go look at them. You know, find one in a used car lot. See if you fit in. You do, buy it. This thing can run forever. I got a customer who's got 450,000 miles and it's a standard. It'll still do burnouts. I mean, those things are well made and there's a lot of room in them. Now, here's an interesting one. Can I run an old Camry on cooking oil? I got an 01 Camry with 210,000 miles. It has oil leaks. I have to put in about a quart. I'm starting to Fill it with vegetable oil, other kinds of cooking oil. I feel it's bad for the environment. I want to get rid of the car within two years. What do you think? Okay, don't use cooking oil. <laughs> engine oil is made for the pressure of engines. It's got to take oil pump pressure to pump up. And some oils, they won't pump that well. And cooking oils is one of them. Now, let's say you had a biodiesel vehicle. You could put that in the tank and you could run a diesel engine on it. Not for lubricating the oil, but for actually running it. And there are people that use biodiesel and cooking oil would work perfectly. Fine, but it'd be awful expensive. It's a lot more expensive than diesel fuel you're gonna buy at the pump, right? But don't use cooking oil. I'll give you kind of a similar bizarreness that I knew years ago. When I went to school in Toronto in Canada, uh, one professor, she was kind of crazy. She was English and that kind of goes with it, you know, absent minded professor and all that. Back in those days, they had selectronic IBMs and they had this little ball that had all the letters and they typed by turning the ball real fast. And she didn't think hers was working right. She just thought, Oil, salad oil. So she put salad oil, and of course, it ruined the electronic typewriter. <laughs> so don't use cooking oil in your engine either. It would destroy it. You know, just use regular oil. And since if it's leaking and burning, just use the cheapest oil you can find. You know, go to Walmart and buy the cheapest oil that'll go in and go there. But don't use cooking oil <laughs> unless you got a biodiesel and you want to run it on that. And go ahead if you can get the cooking oil cheap enough. Like I say, it's not cheap. That's why the guys get the oil and stuff from the trap of a grease trap of a restaurant, and then they got to filter it out and stuff. But you can actually run a diesel on that. You couldn't lubricate it. Couldn't put it in the oil the engine, but you can put it in the tank and run it like biodiesel if it's set up for that. B-Dog 98 says, I got a 2000 Toyota Solera, 103,000 miles. I have check engine light with a P0420 code. Car needs inspected in March. Should I fix it or should I sell it? All right. With that mileage, don't sell it. It's got a lot more life on it. But you can try sometimes the cheapest fix on earth, and I've done that to guys for years. First, just go to like Shell gas station, right? And put in a tank of the Shell V power and drive it on a highway, whatever the speed limit is, 70, 75, for two or three hours. Give it a week of driving around. Sometimes the light will go off because the better gas burns cleaner. And the reason that code is on because your cat's working inefficiently. Sometimes as simple as that. Now, if that doesn't work, you can go to any auto parts stores. They make things like cat clean. You can put in the gas tank that can clean the cat electric. Try that before you waste any money. But Here's an even cheaper fix. If you have it reset, 
like it. A guy like me to reset it, plug in a scan tool and say, erase code, yes, yes. Sometimes if the erase code's on that, drive it for a day, the code won't come back and you can get it inspected. You got to drive it for a day or so because if you don't, it won't be ready. And the guy will say, well, your car's not ready for inspection yet. It's got to run through tests. But after a day or so, it runs through enough tests that it could pass the test if the light didn't come back on quick take. I don't know. A lot of times you can get it passed that way without doing anything. Roseman wants uh, Scott, I love the channel. I got a 96 Honda Civic 1.6, 187,000 miles. Needs a new cat. Should I buy one off a website like Rock Auto A1 or will eBay one work? They're 100 bucks cheaper. Realize in the United States, you buy a catalytic converter from anybody and it's a federal warranty that they have to back up. So personally, I would buy it from a local because then if there's a problem, you can take it and return it. Now, Rock Auto, it's online. I don't know how good they are. If it doesn't work, if you send it back, are they going to give you your money back? You never know. Now, if they say they will, if you call them up and they say, yeah, record the audio on your phone while you're doing it. So if they say they don't take returns, well, this guy said they did, but by law, places have to. And Rock Auto is big enough that they probably would. I would not buy one off of eBay for a hundred bucks because if it doesn't work, there goes your hundred dollars. You never know with catalytic converters. It depends on who makes them, how the stuff uh, meshes. Now, your advantage is it's a 96. It's an old one. So any of them should actually work. If it was like a 2016, a lot of times you got to buy OEM, but those old ones, most of them will work if they fit. So probably, yeah, you call up Rock Auto and say, are these guaranteed? They say, yeah, eh, buy theirs. 823944 says, I got a 2011 Honda Accord 2.4. Runs great and has no codes. I drive highway and I get about 23 miles a gallon. My short term fuel trim is 1.6 and long term is 3.9. My math is also 0.3 pounds per minute. This is normal data. Well, it's adding a little bit of fuel, but 1.6, 3.9, you didn't give the mileage, it's probably got 100 something thousand miles, isn't all that bad. But the math, I only analyze the math stuff in, I don't use the pounds, I use grams per second. And the reason I use that is because if you're at idle with the AC turned off, your mass airflow in grams per second should be close to the displacement of your engine. So let's say you got a 2.4 liter engine. That means when you're idling with the AC turned off, it should be about 2.4 grams per second airflow. And if it isn't that, then it's not working right. So change your computer from pounds per minute to the metric system. And if it's close to 2.4 grams per second, it's okay. If not, then you either got a problem in the mass airflow sensor, or you got some kind of a problem in the restriction of the air flowing in, either the air filter's clogged or there's paper or plastic inside the intake, or there's something wrong with your throttle. Now, if you got a trailer hitch on your vehicle, you might not believe the accessories you can stick on these things. You can get a pickup bed extender or your hitch for 67 bucks. Loads are too long, that'll stretch it out goes right onto your hitch. And the overall length is 55 inches, so that allows you to really extend it, you know? If you got to carry something really big and it won't fit, you can do that. Don't buy another truck. <laughs> get an extender. And of course, you can get a hitch step that goes right into the trailer hitch there, and then it's a big step. The one I'm looking by is a company called TGL, and it's 57 bucks, so you can pick up, stand on it. It's very convenient. You can get LED light pods, one on each side that fit over it. 1,800 lumens, the one I'm looking at, and a 30 30 degree spotlight or 60 degrees if you don't want it to be a spotlight. You're working at night, real handy sticking it back there. Or if something happens and breaks down, you got a great warning system. You can even get a key vault that fits inside the receiver. You go out into the woods, you don't want to bring your credit cards and keys and money and stuff. You can just lock it in there. Just don't let anybody know what you're doing. <laughs> Because, <laughs> of course, somebody might come with a hacksaw, and then you come back, and it's sawed off, and there goes your credit card keys and a wallet, and you're stranded with no money <laughs> and no keys. And, of course, there's hitch mount bike racks. I've seen lots of them, so you can put bikes on them. If, let's say, you filled your bed with crap, you can't put the bikes in them, you can put them on the back. There's even this arcs and luggage rack that's 129 bucks. You can put extra luggage. Now, all I got to say, you got yourself a pickup truck, and you can't fit all the luggage in the bed. You got to put it in the back. You're bringing too much luggage with you. <laughs> and last but not least, if you're a Chevy fan, you get this cool Chevy hitch that goes in there. It's got the Chevy emblem and it lights up. It's made by a company called Boswell. Cool. If you're really into GM, plug it in there, it lights up at night. So, little do a lot of people know, there's a lot of stuff you can do with that trailer hitch other than just pulling stuff. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.